ladies and gentlemen, it is both an honor and a privilege to welcome and announce President Harvey Stenger. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm Harvey Stenger, and I'm your new president. This is an honor. This is humbling, frightening sometimes. But I want to tell you some things that I've learned in the last two months. Let me tell you about my first impressions. The first time that Kathy and I drove on campus, and we were escorted around visiting some of the new buildings. And somebody said, did you like the campus? And I said, this is an incredible campus that I have never been on. And I loved it. I drove through a gate. I saw the administration building. I saw the construction. And I said, this is the kind of campus that I will be proud of for the rest of my life. I was also impressed at the care that the staff, the facilities folks take care of our incredible campus. I was walking on campus one early morning, and I saw one of our staff members outside with one of those little things that pick up the garbage along the street. But she wasn't picking the garbage up off the street. She was looking down a pipe that was holding up a gate. It had a hole in the top of the pipe. And I, I'm sure she saw something down inside that pipe that must have been discarded. And she was reaching down in there to get that out. And I said, that's incredible. No one will know that she's gotten that out. But she knew that she was going to get that out. I got an email from an alum just a couple of days ago, and he said Binghamton should change their name. When I type Binghamton into Microsoft Word, it doesn't recognize it. It's not a word. So I started to write this alum back, telling him how I loved the name Binghamton, how it meant so much to me. And as I was typing my name at the end, I noticed that Stenger is also not in the dictionary. <laughs> but I know who I am, and you know who you are. And by the time I'm done with this job, a lot more people are going to know who you are, because I'm going to work as hard as I can for you. <clears throat> My first impressions also include the spirit of the students and the faculty and the staff that I met, the esprit de corps the family atmosphere, the genuine love that people have for each other on the Binghamton campus in hard times and in good times. I'm also very impressed with the financial situation. We can thank all of our deans for tightening their belts during the tough times in the last five or six years, Vice President of Student Affairs, Vice President of Finance and Administration, external, external Affairs, etc., have done a great job of doing more with less but at the same time, keeping the esprit de corps on campus. I've also been impressed by the rankings, the first impression of learning that we are top five, top six, top two, Kiplingers, Fisk, Princeton Review, that we're highly ranked, not just because we're affordable, but because we have outstanding quality. And my first impressions of the support that we have from our alumni, from the community, from the government officials that I've met with early on, that people want Binghamton to succeed, and they're going to help Binghamton to succeed. Your first impressions always aren't right. I know mine were. Right, Kathy? Yes, my wife. First impressions were right. But I wanted to make sure in this engagement with Binghamton University that my first impressions were right. And so for the last two months, and today is my two-month anniversary, the last two months I have tried, and I think I have at least offered the opportunity to meet with everyone on campus in a structured way, visits to each one of the units, vice presidential areas, schools, college, facilities, as many people who as I can meet at one time but have a conversation with in a way that is meaningful. Friday, I finished those visits visiting with Harper College, 
which of course is the largest entity on campus and the college that many of you graduated from. They were engaged. They wanted to hear my ideas. They also wanted to hear what the vision was, what the future was going to hold for them. And I said to them, the vision is what you helped me build. I will not dry, draw the vision. I will not set the vision, but you will have to help me. The Binghamton faculty, especially the Harper faculty, are going to be critical to that. The student engagement. I've had the opportunity to meet with dozens of students in structured dinners, events. The engagement that they have, the interest in the university, the participation that they have in student government, whether it's within their college and community or within the student assembly. They want me. They're looking for me. They're asking me questions. They have great ideas of how to make Binghamton better. And I'm listening to them because I want to make sure that we don't turn them away because, well, we're just too busy. Those students are going to be the future alumni, and listening to them now is going to be important to their engagement the rest of their lives. But what's next? Okay, I've done my homework. I've met with as many people as possible. I have a bookshelf full of briefing notes. I know where we're good. I know where our weaknesses are. We now we have to build a roadmap. But where do you want to go? You know, you get in your car for a vacation, you know where you're going to go. We have to decide where we're going to go. I heard that we won the award for the premier public university in the Northeast. And in any competition, when you win the regionals, you go to the nationals. So we will become, someday, we will become, and we will focus on, and we will have as our vision to be the premier public university of the 21st century. And I've said this to many people on campus, and they get very skeptical immediately. And I say, but we have the opportunity to define what is premier. Because I do not believe that universities in, in the existing 21st century are premier, who think they are best. I believe that we need to define premier as being the place where students become successful that we focus on the future of our students, that we prepare them for a great career, for a great life. That's our first priority, and too many universities have lost that priority. It will always be our focus, it always has been, but we need pieces around it to make that successful. And the things we need around it are you. We need great people. We need all 106,000 of our alumni to be proud of Binghamton University, to talk about Binghamton University. We need our boards, the alumni board, the foundation board, to help us manage through the process of building the community of our alumni and our supporters. But we need more than that. We need to have more points of light that say Binghamton. We need more people in the world who know who Binghamton are. And we are extremely, extremely capable of doing that because we now have the tools to do that. If you didn't know, this year we exceeded the number of undergraduate applications that we had last year. This year we received over 32,000 applications for our freshman class that we will be building of just 2,500 students. So we have more than 10 applications <laughs> for every position. We also have a state budget that has promised stability. The legislation voted on last year protects the State University of New York's budget for the next five years from any decreases and allows us to slowly 
raise tuition for those who can pay, and to provide financial aid for those who can't pay. When we put this together, a high quality applicant pool, an outstanding campus, excellent faculty, the ability to understand our finances for the near future, for at least five years, we know that we can get bigger. But why? Why do you get bigger? Why does a university want to get bigger? Is it just a goal that we can say that we checked off? Or is it something that really has meaning? And I will offer three reasons why Binghamton University should be bigger. One is that we're really good and we should share it with more people. Why not 3,000 freshmen instead of 2,500 freshmen, as long as those 3,000 freshmen are as good or better than the 2,500 that we would have had? We then also have more points of Binghamton in the world, more alumni, more faculty. Certainly as we're adding students, we'll be hiring more faculty. And the third reason is, and I will say this to those folks here who come from the metro region, the southern tier, the city of Binghamton needs us. The unemployment rate is over 9.8%, close to 10% in the region. IBM is gone. Link Aviation is gone. We're the second largest employer in the region. The first is the hospital system. And as you know, you can't go to the hospital unless you have a job. So we are the major provider of jobs in the region. And I believe that that is a responsibility that we will take seriously, and that as we grow, the economic impact will help the southern tier, help Binghamton, and the surrounding communities. But we're also going to have to grow our facilities, and we have a plan in place. We have 1,100 new beds coming online by the fall of 2013. We've added the infrastructure necessary in order to house 150 new faculty that we'll be hiring over the next four years and 175 staff. We can easily absorb 2,000 new students in the next five years, and we will do that. However, the decision of where, what majors, undergraduate, graduate, are still left up to a planning process that we will begin in the middle of March with the help of the people that are here from Binghamton. Let me just give you a few pieces of what we're going to be doing in the next couple of months. First is we have an opportunity to apply for a challenge grant that we believe has been essentially approved by the governor to win $35 million to construct a new facility on our ITC campus that will focus on smart energy. Fields of smart energy such as photovoltaics, thermoelectric harvesting, battery storage, as well as sensors to protect our environment. That new construction will be the heart of an effort that we believe can rebuild the industrial base of the southern tier, mostly from technologies that are developed by our own faculty and their laboratories, brought to reality inside these facilities. The second opportunity that Senator Schumer and Senator Gillibrand have helped guide us towards is to build a high-tech incubator in the downtown Binghamton area. Once our technologies are developed on the campus, they have to move, and this incubator will allow us to move them closer to the market. At the same time, as we are growing, I think it is paramount, and your support is going to be necessary as well, that we look carefully at the need of our students, that Binghamton always be accessible to any student who meets our standards, and that we do not restrict access because of family income. We're not there yet. We still have a long way to go to make sure that we can meet the need of every student who applies to Binghamton and is accepted. And I'm going to need your help over the next five to 10 years to make sure that we can meet the need, the financial need of every student who demonstrates it so that they can come to Binghamton and be successful, as successful as the people in this room. We have the tools, we have the assets, we have the people, and we have the vision. I don't know if we will ever get there, but I know that we will try, we will work hard, and we will continually say that we will be 
the premier public university of the 21st century. Thank you very much.